So hello, thanks for agreeing to have a chat with me Val. Very welcome, my pleasure. So if you can cast your mind back, why was it that you joined Story School? What were you looking for? Hmm. So for me, it was a very intuitive decision. Um, I had 18 months prior to Story School, I had finished my coaching certification. And then on the back of it, took a big long break, having fallen pregnant with my third child, having been very sick during that pregnancy. Um, and then pretty much going into lockdown after we gave birth to her. Um, I needed to reconnect. So that was one of the drivers for me. I knew it was an intuitive decision that I wanted to connect with women. And I've always wanted to write. And I didn't know exactly in terms of my business, how that was going to tie in, not mm -hmm. really knowing who I wanted to serve at that point. But I just went with this feeling that this is, this is for me. This is something that I really need to do. Mm. And what challenges were you having around un understanding and owning or even knowing the, the power of your work and your ability to, to talk about it? Mm. I think just the challenges, the, the main challenges were, is that, were that vo vocalizing what it is that I want, want to do, um, the vision that I see for the world and for the people that I want to work with. Um, challenges around language, but also being a highly sensitive person kind of um, articulating what it is that I see and that I want to do and putting that into human speak. Yeah. So, that, so that people or the right people won't see it as weird. So it just hits the right spot with the right people. I think that was a big challenge for me that once I got inspired, you know, once I read something, once I watched something, I got so inspired. I was like, yeah, this is what I need to do. This is... This is what I'm going to talk about, but always felt that I was being held back by, oh, but if I say this, what are people going to think? Mm -hmm. How is that going to land in the real human world? So I think for me, that was um, one of the challenges that was actually solved by going to story school is just having this confirmation that, well, what I am talking about and what I do want to say is okay it's okay and it's going to land in the ears of the right people yes yes it is and does and i know that you've had some amazing transformations over the last year what would you say has been or was your biggest transformation within the container of story school mm. yes uh so so there were a few but i think mainly feeling safe to, to tell my story, feeling safe in that container, in that group of women um, being lovingly held by you, by all the others. Um, hearing their stories helped somewhat propel that, um, you know, propel me forward beyond fear, just to, to say what I wanted to say, to tell the stories that came out and it was a bit of a muddled time for me because, you know, having just had a baby, turning up to turning up to class with four hours of sleep sometimes and with baby next to me, but just feeling incredibly safe and feeling that I really, really want to be there and that it's going to re-energize me more and it's going to replenish me more than possibly even taking, you know, a, a little power nap. It's like, let's, let's get to story school first. And then the nap will also happen. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was just a very fragile time for me. So there, were, there was lots to come out. Um, and I think for me, just, just having everybody there to, to hear me, to, um, 
to appreciate even that I was there, even if I if I came to class with nothing to share. Mm -hmm. uh, and just finding finding that being there was incredibly inspirational, just having so many brave women tell their stories out loud. Um, and yeah, just little by little kind of dispelling this fear that I had to just open up my mouth and say what I want to say and know that it's going to be okay. Yes. Do you have any specific memories or examples either in the group or of outside the group of opening your mouth saying what you want to say and it being okay or maybe even more than okay? Yeah I mean during quite a few shares in story school it's kind of just being validated that you know what I thought was was neither unique nor crazy which is, which are both experiences that I've had out there in the real world. Um, and I think the, the more you show up and the more you, you say your truth and the more you have it validated, then you start feeling less of those fears, less of the, am I crazy for saying this? Um, and I think, yeah, the, the real benefit of having a group of women kind of a, going through their stuff and opening up to to let the rest of the world in it's it's that mirror this this story is not unique um it's just being told in a very unique way because you're the person experiencing it yeah and that was just you know wow yeah I'm not the only one but I tell it in a way and somebody else tells it in a completely unique way because that's their experience of probably the same thing that's such a great distinction that that the uniqueness of how you tell it and you as storyteller and then the universality of the content of the story and the connections that are therefore available for us as humans yes absolutely and so I know that it was, it was just a really really beautiful time really yeah, I know, particularly for you, it was, and, you know, I know this because you've, you've shared with me and I've loved hearing it, that a, a large benefit of Story School for you was that nourishing, nurturing community mm -hmm. energy, almost like the self-caring aspect yeah. of it in opposition to the maybe kind of outside the school gates types of conversation, mm -hmm. which lacked that level of, of depth and connection. And while we're in this time where we're sort of beginning to be able to, to go out more, but still some of the connections are happening online, what would you say about that, that piece? The connection piece, well, uh, being one of my biggest values, connection, this last year has taught me a huge lesson that you need to reach out to connect. So if, if anybody out there think, is thinking that doing an online course is not the same as doing face-to-face -face or you know having a, a group container as opposed to a one-to-one -one very specific to you um, style of coaching or mentoring is not for them I would say just give it a go anyways because of the the level and the, the depth of connections that you get that you you can't really replicate with a one-to-one -one, um, although I'm sure it's, it's amazing having, you know, eyes on you and having all the focus on you on a one-to-one -one experience. It's that opening up and it's that circle and everyone's holding hands. It's just that feeling of ultimate safety that you know you're not actually doing this on your own. And you, you can't replicate that. Mm so beautiful so articulate thank you val um and how do you feel now about claiming the value of your work and, and speaking about your why and and what you do it, it's um now it's it's a lot more coherent uh it's gone through through several stages of editing and, and modifying but you know knowing that the the essence that's there won't change it's the language around it depending on how I, I develop and go about life that might change mm. 
and it's also the knowledge that it's not according to which person that I'm speaking to. It's according to checking in with myself, with my wild voice, and does this still feel true? And then maybe the language needs to change, mm -hmm. or maybe it doesn't. So it's not, oh, what do I say now that, you know, maybe somebody else might be in the room listening. It's not about that. And that's just so much nicer because it keeps things so much simpler. So it's not necessarily about who's out there listening because the people that are for you, it's going to land and it's going to land correctly because of that authenticity, because you've gone through the fear, you've moved through it, you've not run away from it. Um, you're not, you know, diverting your attention to other things to make it look just so. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. It's the truth and the, the language that comes out from that is a language that's probably appropriate for the moment. Yeah, I love that so much, Val. Yeah. Yes, 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 to all of that, to clarity on your essence and then the language evolving as you do. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who is considering stepping into the container of, of Story School? Hmm. Um, this was for me, um, probably the most important thing that I've done early on in my business life. Um, it's, it's such an important piece just to, to get your message and your clarity and the language around the essence of your message and the essence of your business message and your business values across. I think you, 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 I don't think you can get this anywhere out there in any kind of business school, uh, which is why it's so special. Um, you know, coaches and mentors and healers and teachers who have this special, special message, this healing message for the world that they want to share might not necessarily want to go with what's out there being taught in business school, mm. what's being taught in marketing, what's being taught about PR in the regular world out there, because things are changing so quickly. Mm. And I heard somebody say recently that entrepreneurship, it's like a, a school in ascension. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's, you know, you're always up-leveling and up-leveling and up-leveling and you're evolving. And, and part of that is releasing what doesn't serve you and then stepping up to the new thing that you might not even know what it is yet. Mm. But this here remains and your core message and your truth. So if anybody's out there considering this, like I think that this is the key piece. This is the thing that you must do. <laughs> even when you're not ready, because, you know, I'm still technically on maternity leave. I'm still kind of, you know, doing the building blocks, doing the behind the scenes to set myself up with my coaching practice. You don't have to feel like, oh, I will do that at that point when I think I might be ready. Maybe you don't know it, but you might already be ready because this is the crucial piece and everything else will land around it. Yeah, such a good point. Mm. yes absolutely and to I you know so much about waiting to oh I'll let me wait to be ready and then I'll crack on with that this is this is the thing that made everything else fall into place including you know knowing who I want to work with knowing that I needed to hire a VA knowing that I needed to hire an editor for my YouTube channel and all these things that before I would have probably rationalized I need to budget for this I need to budget for that now it feels good so I'm gonna make it happen yes that is the way that is the way well done for following the wisdom of your well voice and it's knowing yes thank you what's your healing message for the world oh I didn't know this was gonna be here I didn't know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let's go then. My healing message for the world 
is that inside we know that if we're going against the grain, that there's a way around it, that maybe like fighting so hard for this thing is not the way to thrive. And to me, there's always a way. I think especially when everybody's doing this, I tend to stay well clear of, every, but everybody's doing this. It's almost like alarm bells to me. Okay, well, let me look for another path. Mm. The labyrinth of life is enormous. There's a path for everybody. And I think with the labyrinth of life is that all the paths that you take intuitively will lead you back to you, will lead you back to your true message and your true self. So with all the work for, for the Wild Voices session, that is, you know, that, that's a, a school of ascension right there, you know, just the Wild Voices piece. All, all paths, if you take them intuitively, will lead them back to yourself. All paths, if you take them intuitively, will lead you back to yourself. Mm. Mm. I love it. The labyrinth of life is enormous. Mm. Yeah, beautiful message. Thank you. And if anyone watching wants to find you, hang out with you, where should they come? Where should they come? Um, I guess find me on Facebook um, yeah. for now, uh, but very soon. I'm thinking towards the end of the summer. There will be the Leading Ladies YouTube channel. Watch this space. Mm. Amazing. Thank you, Val. Thank you. Thank you for, mm. for having me here. And um, yeah, thank you for being my wonderful teacher. It's just so nice. It's the, the best class I've ever turned up to.